The Dow, the S&P 500, and the Nasdaq all posting record closes for the second day in a row today, with bank stocks leading the way on the S&P. Joining us now for an exclusive interview is Oakmark Funds Portfolio Manager and CIO of U.S. Equities, Bill Nygren, whose Oakmark Select Fund has been outperforming the market this year. Bill, so people want to know, here we are at record highs. Can, can you still make money? Where are you looking right now? Well, thanks for having me, Sarah. Uh, I think that when you look at the stock market today, you have to realize that it's, it's not really one market, it's more bimodal, where you have a lot of speculative uh, excess in things like the meme stocks, SPACs, some of the technology equipment companies. And then at the other extreme, you have companies like financials and oil stocks that are trading at single-digit PE multiples. That's the kind of stuff we like at Oakmark. It's, it's not the names that every retail investor wants to hear about because they're so exciting. It's the names that are cheap that have been left behind. So we think there's a lot of value if you stay in that half of the stock market. So where does that leave you with Google and Facebook, which don't really fall into that category, but are in your fund and Google closed today at a new record high? Well, both Alphabet and Facebook, we think, are victims of gap accounting that was made for a tangible asset world. Both companies invest heavily through their income statement. And if you make adjustments for their non-earning assets and their money-losing assets, the, the venture cap they're spending on, we think we're able to buy the basic businesses of Google Search and uh, Instagram, as well as the basic Facebook site, at less than a market multiple. And with Alphabet, you've got a weird anomaly going on right now because of their share repurchase, which is uh, only happening in the non-voting shares. You can actually save $70 a share buying Alphabet if you buy the voting shares. So you're getting paid $70 a share to accept the ability to vote. We think that makes it a, like a uh, value squared. It's a cheap stock to begin with, and by buying the voting shares, you're getting it extra cheap. My notes say that you like three quarters of the FANG stocks. Which is the one that you don't like? Uh, we also own Netflix. Uh, we think they're investing through lower prices. And Netflix delivers video to consumers at about half the price per hour as cable TV does. Uh, we used to own Amazon. But when the market got so excited about Amazon Web Services, uh, we had trouble uh, anticipating what a valuable business that would be seven years out, and uh, we sold our Amazon. At the time we owned it, uh, it was selling at a lower price to sales than bricks and mortar retail was, and we thought it was a tremendous value, even though it didn't look like it on a PE basis. So you mentioned the tech play and then the bank play, which it looks like Bank of America and Citigroup are two of your, your biggest positions. I asked Mike Mayo about Citigroup and its underperformance lately and what that signaled and just how, how all of these names are positioned ahead of earnings, which start tomorrow. Well, it, at Oakmark, uh, we're not really focused on, ever focused on next quarter or even next year's earnings. We try to think what this company might look like five to seven years down the road. And with Citi today, you're paying a little over 80% of book value, about eight times the earnings that it's currently reporting. You've got a relatively new CEO whose focus is to slim city down to the businesses where they have tremendous competitive advantage, such as their treasury services division. They're able to sell off these other odds and ends that they have at more than book value and use proceeds to repurchase stock. Uh, yes, it's underperformed, but to us, that's part of what makes it really attractive today. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.